Version 10 is here. Tesla's biggest update to date in terms of the features and functionality that it's delivering. Lots of different features to get into. We're going to break them down over the next couple of days and go deep into each individual area. Uh, today, we're going to talk about autopilot. So the new driving visualization is pretty good on local roads as well. It does a really good job detecting uh, the different types of lines, specifically the double lines, as well as the dash lines, uh, where they break in terms of intersections, as well, as well as how they're consistent to the main road, as you see here. All right, so double lines are there, and then the oncoming traffic. So I chose this view because I can put it on autopilot here uh, on more of a local undivided highway route, which again, a benefit of autopilot of being able to do that but also because I can show you what local cars look like. The car is bigger, the visualization is bigger here. Not so much of a big deal for the Model 3 because the screen is a little bit bigger, uh, but for the Model S and X, being able to see this is also very valuable. Again, lane lines go away for an intersection, then they come back. Again, just putting it active shows just a singular line. Uh, you'll also notice that the frame rate of the cars and the visualization is also increased as well. So instead of, I guess the best comparison would be prior to this update, they were probably running at 30 frames per second. Again, just using a, a relative example. And now it looks like they're moving more at 60 frames per second, uh, a, more, a more active frame rate. Cars pass by smoother than before. And more importantly, they pass by more seamlessly than before. Right, being passed from one camera to the next as they pass here. No stoplight detection so far, no stop sign detection, but in terms of the visualization, everything is a lot smoother and the, the frame rate is higher. Also sees parked cars a lot better, registers them as such as you pass by them. Also does vehicle recognition on them as well. So whatever type of parked car it is, it'll recognize that. Doesn't do so much on this, on this side as you pass this car, it doesn't show that, but it will show the cars that are oncoming. And again, it's, it's hit or miss. Sometimes it shows them, sometimes it doesn't. So need some improvement there, but it's better than, you know, sort of nothing and not even recognizing that the car sees it. Uh, and then more importantly, the biggest update to version 10 in this autopilot, in this visualization, I should say, is no more dancing cars. Stopped at a stoplight here. It shows the dash line on the street. It also shows the other cars to the left of me and in front of me and behind me, but no more dancing around. So the actual transition from the different cameras, and as you see, the uh, this pops up because it recognizes it as a van. Uh, it pops up and, and changes the vehicle recognition, but no more dancing cars. The cars are still, they're smooth, and this is the way it should have been all along, but this is what's happening right now. And it passes from one camera to the next as cars pass me. It passes it very smoothly. Uh, it doesn't do a great job recognizing the cars that turn, but it does do it a little bit. So as you see the car turning here, it does see those cars turning, but the ones going here has a little bit of a hard time recognizing. Lit on the light, but that's also a good feature of version 10 in the visualization updates that they've made and just updates to the cameras in terms of passing the image from one camera to the next. Got a pickup truck right here in front of us and a pickup truck on the visualization. Shows the turning as well. It's a pretty good representation of that pickup truck too. Can't speak enough about the frame rate difference here um, in terms of version 9 and version 10. They really boosted the frame rate. I've noticed the frame rate has jumped for this uh, MCU2 car. Uh, and then it also has jumped for the MCU1 cars. So I guess the, the relative term in that regard would be as if um, this has jumped from 30 frames per second, it seems to what it seems to be 60 frames per second. That's not the exact terminology to be used for instrument clusters, but just using it as a basis of comparison, 30 frames per second to 60 frames per second, it seems on the, on MCU2, but MCU1 goes from maybe uh, 24 frames per second to now 30 frames per second in terms of how fluid the visualization is in the instrument cluster. Pedestrians, it will show, pedestrians have not changed much. They don't change orientation like cars do. Cars can turn in different directions. Uh, and they'll visualize that people are either facing straight forward or they're facing, you know, left or right. There is no in between. They don't turn dynamically as uh, as their orientation turns in real life or as the car's orientation turns relative to them. All right. Autopilot 
in V10. Let's talk about it, let's jump into it. In one word, confidence. Or in one phrase, confidence inspiring. That's what this is. Um, they've made significant updates to assure the driver that autopilot is seeing the right things and is going to do the right things on the highway. It's not perfect, but it's significantly better and specifically more confidence inspiring than version nine. The way it handles the lines, the way it accelerates and decelerates in a more natural manner, the way that it changes lanes, as well as what it shows on the screen. As you see on the screen, the cars are passing very smoothly from one camera to the next. No more herky-jerky, no more cars jumping in and out, blipping in and out. Lane lines are all rendered, so the entirety of the highway is effectively rendered on the visualization here. Different car classifications are also being rendered. In addition to SUVs and cars, semis, you also have buses, you have pickup trucks, you have uh, passenger vans, bicycles, motorcycles, and pedestrians. So, so far, these are different types of vehicles that I've been able to identify here. And it does a really good job of recognizing them, especially with the forward facing camera. As you see, this passenger van here is recognized as a passenger van there versus an SUV that's coming up here that you see down there as well. So great vehicle recognition and detection, specifically from the forward facing cameras. The side cameras as well are also able to pick it up, but not as quickly or as efficiently as the forward facing cameras are able to do. So a car may pass you on one of your blind spots and they register as a car from those cameras, but then by the time it comes to the front camera, it's, you recognize it that it's a, uh, a passenger van or an SUV. Shows the dash lines. Here's the auto lane change with the uh, blind spot monitoring. Much more composed, will slow down gently to get me in. This still doesn't overtake, which is what my recommendation would be, especially if it's within the speed that you set, but it did a great job just getting in the right lane and slowing down and being more composed in doing so. So that's pretty good. Um, right now, navigate on autopilot is set, so you see all the dash lines. When you use standard autopilot without navigate on autopilot, you lose the dash lines that you're in, which is inconsistent in the visuals they show here. Okay, so I'll take this off for a second. Goes to regular autopilot, now you see no more dash lines in the lane you're in. It's inconsistent, it's, it's hard to discern what's what just looking at the screen. Dash lines to the right, uh, solid lines to the left. It's, it's, it's hard to discern. Putting Navigator on the pilot back on, you see the dash lines and now everything makes a lot more sense if you're just looking at the screen. What they should do is turn the dash lines blue when you're on autopilot, if they're gonna represent it that way. That way the UI is consistent through and through. All right. in addition to that, again, pickup trucks, you see a pickup truck there. Everything is just better. The acceleration, the deceleration is smoother. It still doesn't maintain that distance, like I mentioned before, in terms of distance one, a little tighter so no one can cut you off. But as the car coming from a standstill to accelerating, it keeps that distance. It maintains a solid distance in between. So accelerate smoother, decelerate smoother, maintains the lanes a lot smoother as well. All right, other than that, lane change animation, as you saw before, is different. Uh, showing you, giving you sort of a vantage point on what's in the lane before you make the lane change, which I think is valuable and it's in the right direction. Here's the auto lane change animation. Car won't let me through, but it's still gonna visualize that. So see it's highlighted blue, and then it's gonna give me the indicator that it's there and it's gonna jump over, okay? So that's what we want, or that's what I would like to see as the main visual for autopilot. That way the lane is highlighted. You don't have to worry about the issue with the lines. You just have a main lane highlighted that's autopilot. And when it when it changes the lane, it shows you that the lane that you're following is gonna be in the next lane. It's just consistency in the UI, I think would be beneficial as opposed to the lane lines, which now cut off the dash line information that they show you right now. The nag seems to be loosened up a little bit, less aggressive. I can take my hands off the wheels for a second or a few seconds and it's not gonna go crazy. Uh, like it did in version 9. Uh, let's see how long this will last before it asks me to comply. Again, this is pretty good. I feel more confident when I don't get nagged every five seconds. I feel like when I'm nagged, that means the car needs my help. All right. Still no nag. Hands are still up. 
nothing's touching the wheel just to see how long it'll go before it prompts me to do something there we go right there and that's not bad that's where it should be that's the, that's a good spot for it to be where i can relax but i don't get too relaxed and i can still stay vigilant good job there tesla um phantom braking is still an issue um in the same spots that it was an issue before for us so uh, places that we know uh, overpasses that we know phantom braking is still an issue they have not fixed that please fix that tesla please make that a priority now that v10 is out and now that you're going to start to work on full self-driving please make that a priority but the other issue the main pet peeve which was the uh, merging lane lines and it's trying to center itself inside that merging lane line that is also still there however if i can get over however it's more composed now it's not as aggressive as it was before and i'll show you once we get up to this turn up here lots of traffic going in pretty aggressive composed braking as it starts to slow down very good very effective as well i feel much better riding on autopilot with this level of behavior versus v9 this is probably the best version of autopilot to date in terms of its composure and in terms of its confidence okay signaling a lane change jumps me in not too aggressive and then carries on so the person who i just jumped in front of wasn't startled they didn't give flashlights at me they didn't do whatever because that was a very natural composed human-like lane change which i think was pretty good Otherwise, it's been phenomenal so far. So V10 is the autopilot to beat, so to speak. Another lane change, signaling, giving me that nice view, that nice side view of the can of the car and lane, giving me confidence that it knows what it's doing and knows what it's seeing in terms of other cars around it. I can't say enough about how composed this instance of V10 autopilot is. And more importantly, no more herky-jerky cars, no more cars spinning around. It actually looked like it kind of swerved a bit for this other SUV, I mean, this uh, other semi-truck, which is actually good. The opposite of what it typically did with truck lust, where it veers towards semis. Truly astonishing. This is really, really giving me confidence that full self-driving is attainable in the next couple of years using vision-based technology, not using uh, LiDAR and such, but vision-based technology. Just the way that the cameras are able to see the cars around it, visualize it here, as well as the lane lines, gives me lots of confidence. Still a ways to go, still a ways to go, but this is really, really impressive. This is really groundbreaking. And again, no other car manufacturer is doing this right now and has this on the roads right now in the hands of thousands of customers who can give feedback, real world feedback, um, not just programmed, computerized, calculated feedback, but real world feedback that can help improve it. Here's a bit of a merge here. Let's see what happens. It does the same behavior, but it does it very slowly, very composed, gets centered, then comes back, which is better than the aggressive sort of sharp turn that it did before. Still not the right behavior again, but better than before. So I appreciate at least that addition to that. Again, more composed is the word here. Um, and composure in general is the word when it comes to this V10 autopilot. Um, one thing I noticed is that it, there seems to be a limit to the lanes in which it can show cars. It visualizes all the lanes that are here, but it doesn't show the cars in those lanes. It doesn't show the cars in those lanes, it just shows the lane lines themselves, which is interesting because what's more valuable is to know that there are cars there and show all those cars. Now this is very, very dense traffic, lots of cars to show. I'm pretty sure it's, it's uh, processor intensive to try to show them all, but at least give me two lanes to the left of me or one to the left and one to the right like you typically do. But because I'm in the far right lane, it should at least show me two lanes across in terms of other cars, not just the lane I'm in and the lane next to me.